as I said in committee when we were ending this uh, committee uh, back, back in June, that we were going to take the take our committee on the road because of it. You know, we have to uh, prepare ourselves for bills that are going to probably be handed to us in the next year, year and a half. And uh, Representative Berkeley uh, offered up to come up to his district uh, to uh, to site visits today. I appreciate uh, Representative Berkeley's uh, leadership in that process of uh, being able to do this in this process. But I, one thing I want to do is, as a committee here is to educate ourselves as we go before us. And then, you, as you know, members in LA, when you get that call about you know dealing with biodigesters or dealing with water quality, we're always going to be dealing with those issues as bills come before us. So my goal as a committee chair is just to make sure that we uh, have that proper process, that we can ask the right questions, educate ourselves, and take that information back to uh, Columbus. So I'm going to introduce a good friend of mine uh, from back in and back in the district, uh, Mel Kurtz. Mel, uh, good morning. want to say a few things, and then I'll turn off, turn it to Mr. Ber uh, Representative Berkeley a few things, and then we'll uh, do our uh, sure. Business here. Well, first, thank you. This represents one of I think 14 in Ohio now. Now I think we have the highest population of complete mixed digesters of any state in the union. It's a big deal. Um, we'll process in Ohio a little over 400,000 wet tons of uh, organic waste in the next 12 months. And we think, I think we have five more facilities that'll be finished by, by the end of this year. So it's been big. EPA, fantastic. Um, Scott and Alley, has really done a spectacular job of getting getting up to speed. And when I was asked once before what the biggest hurdle was, and I said, you guys. Whoa, how could that be? My answer is because innovation always precedes regulation and legislation. That's why it's so important for you guys to do what you're doing today, to come up and see what's happening. Because you see the small footprint. This is we have more acreage here because he had access to it. And our partner owns Havlin drainage products across the street. He, he consumes eight megawatts of electricity and his rates are going up about 20% a year. So he hedged his, his, his uh, cost of doing business with the digester and the two windmills. So he's uh, he's trying to get out in front of the next thing is, I think Christina, you said, could have carpooled out here and save some gas, but not for us, because we make our own fuel, and we drove out here on about 50 cents worth of fuel that we make from the digester. Mel, we were planning on riding with you. I got that. <laughs> the, the, the point is, this really is next generation, where we might have 350 digesters in the entire country. Germany alone has over 7,000 they have little different constraints than we do. They don't have landfills. They don't have their, they import almost all of their energy. They don't have, uh, and then they have a dense population, of course. All right, from here for us, it'll be Bruce Dangler who runs the plant and has done so from day one. So his learning curve on this facility was from the bottom up. He helped build it, now he runs it, and um, he's really the guy that's gonna provide all of your specific insight about the facility. And uh, Bruce, I know I only talked to you a few times since this thing's been up. Thanks for doing a really good job. I'm not sure where Mel started, 